Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Glad you could join me. You're looking fantastic. I like what you've done with your hair. I like your shirt. Nice stylistic choices. So around this time last year, I did a video about the top 10 best selling fragrances of 2021, the fragrances that people were actually buying, actually wearing. And we're going to do that again today for 2022 and see once again, what's your average Joe buying? So let's go ahead and just jump into it because there's a lot to talk about, a lot to go over. Guys, I do want to remind you that if you shop at twistedlily.com or perhaps maxaroma.com, use the code GENS10 to save yourself 10% off. So there's a lot to talk about here, a lot to go over. I'm not talking about what people are buying from discounters with this video. So we're talking fragrance net, fragrance buy, uh, Joma shop, places like that. That's not what we're talking about here. Because essentially, if you get a fragrance net and you put best sellers, it's gonna be the same stuff. Like it never changes. I don't even think those are actually the best sellers on their website. They just basically have it set in a, a fixed position, it feels like, and the same things are always there. And then uh, Joma shop and fragrance buy, typically the best sellers on those websites are uh, whatever is hot right now, as far as like cheap fragrances goes, or sometimes like if they get in a new release and it's discounted, it'll sell out really fast. But those aren't like actual true barometers as to what your average Joe is buying, right? So what I did is I went to the big retailers in the United States. Of course, this could be a little bit different if you're in Europe. Also, if you're in Europe, you're going to have access to some fragrances that us in the US don't even have access to. And that goes for the Middle East as well. Sometimes the Middle East will have exclusive editions of fragrances that we don't have access to in the US. That's a whole thing. So uh, really, I went and I looked at all the big retailers because that's where these fragrance companies make their big money at retail. So we're talking Macy's, we're talking Sephora, we're talking Saks and uh, Ulta, places like that. And I looked over these websites and of course this will change as time goes on, you know, as some things sell better and some things sell worse, you would expect this list or these uh, fragrances as the best sellers to fluctuate over time. But anyway, I looked through those and I tried to look at the common themes, the common fragrances, what is selling everywhere. So to me, of the bestseller lists on these websites, Macy's appears to be the most realistic. So we'll go over what the top 10 is on Macy's and then kind of peer into the fragrances on the other websites as well. With me? Cool, let's get started. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did last year, which means only one fragrance allowed per line. So that means only one Sauvage, the top rated Sauvage, that one will be there, but the ones that were rated below have been removed and everything shifted up. Same thing for Bleu de Chanel or any other line. But I will tell you where there would have been other uh, Sauvages or Bleu de Chanel's or whatever after we run through the list. I know, it's getting more complicated by the minute. Okay, Macy's, number 10 best-selling men's fragrance. Tom Ford Oud Wood. Also, when you look at Macy's and you sort by bestsellers, you have to be aware that some of them say sponsored. Those aren't actually in the official like ranking. It's just they're being slotted in there to say, hey, check this one out too. So Tom Ford Oud Wood, classic fragrance. Love this one. Not going to argue at all with this being in the top 10. Very wearable, uh, mysterious, sexy, classy. Oud Wood is a modern classic masterpiece. Number nine also makes sense because it's Armani Code Parfum. You would expect this to be in the top 10 because it's the newest flanker in a very popular, very successful line of fragrances. It's very approachable, it's easy to wear, it's fresh off the top and gets a little bit warmer as it dries down. So it has that opening that will grab people's attention, but it also has that staying power as well that people want. So again, this one makes sense. I can wrap my head around that. Number eight is uh, Bad Boy. Yeet. Now Bad Boy is, uh, you know, it's not gonna get a whole bunch of love from people that are hardcore into fragrances and everything, it is made to be people pleasing. You know, it's just got that Tonka coming at you full force. It's got that sweetness, but it is a really wearable fragrance. So it makes sense that this would be in the top 10 and it makes even more sense when you realize it's not just bad boy, it's bad boy gold fantasy. Now you may ask yourself, oh, gold fantasy, what is that? Oh, that's just a collector's edition of bad boy kind of like they did i think it was last year with superstars which was in a silver bottle well now they have gold fantasy in a gold bottle number seven is good old one million yep just one million still rocking still selling people still wearing it and actually one million from what i could see 
uh, would appear to be Paco Rabanne's most successful fragrance. Well, obviously when you're saying over time, yeah, duh, but I mean, right now, like this stuff is still selling really well. You know, you're still seeing it up there in the upper echelon of the bestseller list. So 1 million doing a good job. Now, those four, if I had not removed flankers of lines that were already represented higher up on the list, would not have been in the top 10. So those are actually the first four out. Now we crack into the official real top 10. So essentially what I'm saying is uh, you're gonna see a whole bunch of recurring fragrances from this point forward or recurring fragrance lines. Number 10, ombre leather from Tom Ford. So Tom Ford actually really good showing here and ombre leather, is one of the best selling fragrances out there right now. Like every website that I went to and I sorted by best sellers, assuming that they carried this fragrance, it was up there. Like you saw it all the time. So this one really popular and it's a great wearable leather. Number nine is Versace Eros Eau de Toilette. And this does make sense, you know, in the battle of clubbing fragrances, even though that's not really all that they're good for. They have much more versatility as I harp on ad nauseum. Aero Soda Toilette beat out 1 million as far as the best sellers list goes. And when I pit them up against each other in a tournament, Eros won pretty handily. Number eight, Bleu de Chanel Parfum. And this is something that I found interesting on Macy's website, unless I completely overlooked it somehow. And I did check a couple times. Bleu de Chanel Parfum outperforming the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette not in the top 15. Very odd. This is, of course, the, the classiest of the Bleu de Chanel's, at least until they come out with Bleu de Chanel Elixir. And I'm not saying I have any insider information here. I'm just saying whatever Dior does, Chanel copies, and also vice versa. You know, it goes both ways here. And so Dior comes out with Sauvage Elixir. Everybody goes, good job, Dior. Wow, amazing. And then Chanel is like over a couple hills back, you know, they're a mile away, just binoculars and everything. You see that? You see that elixir? We need one. Get working on that right now. So Blue de Chanel Parfum, and then after that is Eros Eau de Parfum. So yeah, number seven, Eros once again. Uh, this one, the Goldilocks of the Eros line, splitting the difference between the Eau de Toilette and the Parfum. For most people, Eros Eau de Parfum probably is the most versatile choice, the best choice as of right now for the Eros line. Maybe you're a little younger, you wanna go with the Eau de Toilette, you're a little older, but you still like that DNA, you wanna go with the Parfum, but split the difference, it's probably your safest bet. Number six, why Eau de Parfum? Of course, can't argue that, you know? It's a, it's a blue fragrance powerhouse, of course it's a bestseller. And I did see this one pop up across multiple websites, of course, but it did not perform maybe quite as good as I was expecting. It still did really well, you can tell it's a bestseller. After that, Aqua de Jo. Yeah, the original Aqua de Jo. No, no Profundo in the top 10. No Profumo, no Absolute, no Profundo Lights, no Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette. And that goes across the board. Pretty much every website I checked that had Aqua de Jo's on that website, the Eau de Toilette was the best seller. So that again goes to show you that people buy what they know. So if they buy a fragrance like this one and it worked for them years and years ago, Again, we're talking your average Joe here, somebody who has maybe one or two or three fragrances. They keep re-upping. So they wore Aqua de Joe in 2000 and then they need a new bottle. They buy it again and they buy it again and buy it again. It's just easy. After that, Sauvage Elixir. Sauvage Elixir doing really well. Outselling Sauvage Parfum, apparently by a pretty wide margin. And this one was on pretty much every top 10 list if the store carried. Sauvage Elixir, it was there. Now it is selling better at Macy's than some of the other stores I checked, but it's always in the top 10. And after that, Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Yeah, the original Sauvage, still selling, selling a lot. The Johnny Depp special, Johnny Depp out in the desert burying his jewelry. It's a feeling, Sauvage. So we're in the top two. Number two is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum on Macy's, again, as of this video. Watching it in the future could be something else. Very classy. I do think that Blue de Chanel is overall classier smelling than Sauvage, but some people like that, you know, that attention grabbing nature of Sauvage, which really I think Sauvage is more bold. It's a little bit more in your face. It's, you know, trying harder to get you noticed. Blue de Chanel is a little bit more restrained, but still just as good as far as pulling compliments goes. Just goes about it a different way. And so the number one bestseller, Sauvage Eau de Parfum, <laughs> more Sauvage, at least on Macy's. I've noticed that Sauvage Eau de Parfum has supplanted 
the Eau de Toilette. On the other websites, the other stores, it seems Sauvage Eau de Toilette outperforms the Eau de Parfum. So that's Macy's top 10. That's what's selling right now. The first four out and then the actual top 10. So you can kind of make your own list if you want to remove all the extra Sauvages, Blue de Chanel's and Eros's, then the first four I showed you would make the top 10. If you don't, then you end up with the top 10, which is primarily composed of three lines. So I'm gonna very quickly here talk to you about how it looked on Sephora, how it looked on Ulta. So on Sephora, you had Blue de Chanel in the top two spots, the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. You also had in the top 10, Sauvage Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum and Elixir. So five out of the 10 are from those two lines. And again, that's where I think it's a little iffy. That's the only thing on Macy's that I thought was odd that Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette was not in the top 10. It's possible, I guess, that it was sold out as of when I was checking the uh, bestsellers list because when Macy's does have something sell out, you can't find it like in their just, uh, browse feature. Now, Sephora did have two replica fragrances, Jazz Club and By the Fireplace in the top 10. And I think that makes sense for Sephora because Sephora is known to kind of push the replica line of fragrances. And those are really the two best ones for men. So that makes sense. But then one thing that I thought was a little odd was commodity had multiple fragrances as bestsellers. So they had Milk Expressive, they had Milk Bold, they had Gold Expressive, and a bunch of other fragrances that were right there in their bestsellers. And that to me is a little odd. And it, it makes me question if those are placed there because of how like being sponsored, essentially like Commodity saying, hey, boost us up there. Now I know that Commodity before it went bankrupt originally, and then was relaunched. But before it went bankrupt, they did well with sales at Sephora. Like that was one of the places that really, you know, carried them and pushed them and stuff. But again, uh, it seemed a little bit off because as far as men's fragrances go, I, I don't know if I buy that. Like you're telling me right now that at Sephora and Sephora's website, that Milk Expressive is outselling Sauvage Elixir, Sauvage Eau de Parfum, Eros Eau de Toilette, Chanel Allurum Sport. You you expect me to like believe that? I, I don't think it's the case. I mean, it's possible, I guess, right? I mean, it is listed there as a bestseller. And then Ulta, Ulta made sense. Like it was Eros, it was Blue de Chanel, it was Sauvage, it was Y Eau de Parfum. The only things that stuck out there was uh, Burberry Hero Eau de Parfum is performing really well on Ulta's website or also Ulta store. And Valentino Womo Born in Roma is crushing it. Like they were number four. But on the whole, when you look across multiple websites, you start looking at more and more and more. The ones that actually have it where you can sort by best sellers and it doesn't look like some obviously manipulated stuff, because some stores, especially smaller stores, it looks like the bestseller stuff is not realistic. You know, they're trying to be like, oh yeah, this um, Arma fragrance that we have listed for $170, that's a bestseller. If that's the case, then whoever's buying that stuff is just, you need to stop. But in my eyes, it's very obvious anyway, that the Blue de Chanel line, the Sauvage line, outside of Sauvage Parfum, that one underperforms the others by a wide margin. The Eros line, specifically the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum, and Aqua de Jo Eau de Toilette, the original, and Y Eau de Parfum. Those are your best sellers. You have other ones that perform really well. Tom Ford's Ombre Leather, uh, Tom Ford Noir Extreme, One Million, uh, Light Blue Pour Homme from Dolce & Gabbana. And then you have just a whole bunch of fragrances that are performing well like a whole bunch, but they're not performing up to like that upper, upper echelon, like the S tier of selling at retail fragrances. Now there is also uh, big retailers like Nordstrom and Saks, but those are a little bit more geared toward like your niche fragrances. And honestly, looking at the best sellers at Saks is not super duper exciting. Do you want me to break it down for you? Okay, here it goes. Sauvage, Bleu de Chanel, kind of like all the other stores, Bond number nine, like a bunch of bond number nines and a bunch of creeds. There's your top sellers for Saks Fifth Avenue. Oh, and also some Le Labo. Yeah, there you go. So that will do it for me. That's kind of where things stand heading into the end of uh, 2022. Again, pretty much the same as last year. The only fragrance that's uh, really new-ish that's stuck around as far as top sellers goes is Sauvage Elixir. The other ones, you'll have them come out, they'll pop into the top 10 and they'll sell for a little while. And then as time goes on, they drop out of the top 10, but Elixir seems to have legs. All right, guys, that'll do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.